In this podcast episode, I'm gonna be going over the very first installment of my planning session series for the new year. Now, don't forget to go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash 2023 planning book to get the free planning book guide that I've created, which gives you my five step system. Now in these five steps, you're gonna learn about improv, solo piano voicings, repertoire, and so much more. And that's all in this free planning book for 2023. So again, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash 2023 planning book to get that free planning book guide. And in this podcast, I'm going to be walking you through how to create a plan for 2023 so that you can see more results in less time. With that being said, let's dive right in. All right. So here's the first thing. Before we get to the piano and I go over a couple of these different things, this is going to be a planning session. So the best piece of advice that I can give all you right now for 2023 is A, number one, is to know exactly what you want to do. You know exactly what you want to be able to play like or play for that manner. And I don't want to just hear you say, oh, I want to play jazz, right? I want to play jazz piano. I want to be able to, here's an example. I want to be able to play like Bill Evans over the ballad tune, Turn Out the Stars or A Time for Love. Or I want to be able to solo like Chick Corea um, over the blues or solo like Herbie Hancock or I just want, I want to get better at my bebop improvisation. So the more specific you can make it, the better this is going to be. Now in the guidebook, you're going to see two different things. You're going to see your um, want and you're going to see your need. Okay, I want to make sure I was saying that right. Correct. Yeah. So your want and your need, and it's broken down into quarters for the year. So Q1, quarter one, January, February, March, Q2, you know, April, May, June, so on and so forth. So you're going to break your year up into quarters and you can, you're going to reassess every three months. So essentially you're going to plan for the first quarter. Okay. And then you're going to use all these things. Um, strategies that I'm going to be giving you over this series. Then you're going to plan for the second quarter, the third quarter, and you're going to revisit this series. Okay. So I want you to revisit everything I'm going to teach you about all this. And your want goal is different than your need goal. Okay. So in the booklet, your want goal is different than your need goal because your want is what you want to be able to accomplish, but your need is what do you need to do to get you there? Right, A lot of us say, I want to be able to play Turn Out the Stars, like Bill Evans' ballad, and then we need to, what, would, what do we need to practice? Well, a lot of us just try to play the tune. So we just go play the tune and play it in a ballad format, and essentially nothing ever really gets better because we're not really practicing anything. We're just trying over and over and over and essentially failing at doing something that we want to get better at, but there's certain components and tools I'm going to talk about in just a second that are the parts of the car, right? To get you to the place that you want to go. Because without an engine, without wheels, without all these different tools and components in your jazz piano performance spectrum of the skill sets that you have, you can't do the things that you want to be able to do. You can't play Turn Out the Stars like Bill Evans, the ballad style, right? You can't play a medium swing style and solo over it like Oscar Peterson. Or you can't just play bebop, right? Or comp or accompany a soloist, an instrumentalist, a sax player, a singer over a fast swing tune because you don't have the necessary components in your car, right? So you can think about your jazz piano skill set as like a car and you got to add these components in to make it go to certain places, right? Okay, so your want, the first thing which is really, really important is your want is going to be different from your need. And I'm going to go more into that in just a second. Don't worry, we're going to get to the piano and we're going to go through all these good things in just a second, but I really just need to give you guys this introduction so you have uh, an understanding of how this breaks down. Jazz piano and a systematic approach to it can be very mental. A lot of times we just jump right into the piano, we want to play, that's all good and dandy, but it doesn't really help us make progress, okay? 
Our want is different from our need. The next thing you need to do is be very, very honest with yourself, okay? Very honest for yourself. I'm with Bo I'm from Boston originally. And the Boston folk, if all you guys know many people from Boston or the East Coast in general, um, we're, we're, we're usually straight shooters, <laughs> right? And um, we don't like to beat around the bush. And so that's the best thing that, you, that can help you right now is that I want you to be completely honest with yourself as much as possible. And I want you to say to yourself, what do I know and what do I not know? Because so many times ego and desires, false realities of desire, like wanting to be good, but not being good really, you know, and kind of thinking that you are in a spot where you're not really there yet. That ties into all this so much, I can't even tell you. So I want you to be as honest as possible about what you know and what you don't know, okay? And if you guys have questions at all or you wanna chat through this, hey, Alex, good to see you. Um, Robert, if you wanna work chat you know, about certain things, let me know if you have questions along the way. Do you know your rootless voicings? Now, when I say know them, right, what is the definition of know your rootless voicings? Here's essentially my definition. If you can play, if you can go to a tune and comp through a tune, I would say around 120 to 150 and comp all your rootless voicings down cold without any hesitation or mistakes, you know them like the back of your hand. If I were to pull up a chart, um, just friends is the tune of the month for all members right now, right? And I were to comp through my rootless voicings with my right hand or my left hand or maybe both hands, right? And comp through the entire tune and not miss a single rootless voicing at 120. And you can only play, you could just play whole notes if you want, right? I'll play bass notes with us. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right? If you can cop through the entire tune and not miss a single rootless voicing, you got them. They're solid, right? And if you can do that for multiple tunes, now I'm, I'm not talking about tunes you practice. I'm talking about random tunes that you're flipping open to and, and doing this exercise for, right? If you can do that for a random tune, you have your rootless voicings down cold. Okay, that would be saying to yourself, I know them. If you can't do that and you're saying, oh, I know my rootless voicings, unfortunately, you don't really know your rootless voicings. And in jazz piano, because of the art and act of spontaneity in the craft, we need to know these tools and principles so well that they can flow through us flawlessly because we need to be able to insert them in a spontaneous manner that expresses who we are as an art form, right? And so many of us, myself included, throughout my entire journey, even to this day, I really have to hone in and pull back my ego, right? And say, oh, I know those, I know those. Do I know them, though? Do I know them? Do I know my bebop approaches? Right? over all chord tones to all my minor seven chords. Do I know my altered scales, right? Do I know my two hand voicing setups with one, seven, and three for all minor seven chords, right? Can I go through? Circle of fourths, can I go up in half steps? Can I comp through a whole tune with just one, seven, and three to be able to create two hand voicings to accompany for solo piano, for accompaniment, do I know how to do that, right? Could I do that? And if there's any hesitation at all, you don't really know them and they need to be worked on. It's like a thorn in your body. You gotta pull it out, right? You gotta focus in on the problematic stuff that's like holding you back. And playing tunes over and over and over again or sitting out the piano and playing for fun and playing for the real book, that's not getting at it. It's not getting at the root of the issue, right? We gotta work on the stuff that we don't wanna work on, right? I'm getting into it, obviously. If we just play for fun or we just practice tunes, practice quote unquote tunes over and over and over again, that's not practicing, that's not making progress. And in 2023, 
I want you to be as disciplined as possible to say to yourself, what do I need to work on? What do I need to get to a level that will allow me to spontaneously use that tool in my playing so that I can feel comfortable with it and not have to worry about it, right? You know there's a voice in the back of your head, oh, I can't play my rootless voicing. I can't play my altered voicing, right? I can't play my bebop scales, right? Whatever the tool is, okay? Right? I can't play anything. And there's, trust me, I have things that I don't know as well either, right? And it's all dependent upon your goal. Let's go there now for just a second, okay? So in the guidebook, if you guys have the guidebook open, again, if you don't, if you're just joining us, um, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash 2023 planning book to get the guidebook. If you're a member, I just emailed it out to everyone. Um, on the email list. If you didn't get it for some reason, again, you can still go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash, um, uh, uh, wow, I just lost my train of thought because I saw a comment. John, one sec. Um, jazzpianoschool.com forward slash 2023 planning book to get it. Uh, John, this will be for all levels. It's going to be for all levels. So if you're a complete beginner, and let's say your goal is just to play the blues, this is going to be, it could be for you, John, whatever level that you're at. Um, it can be for any level. And yeah, this will be for beginners and intermediate players the most, okay? So here's how we do it. With the guidebook open, I wanna talk about your goal now, goal setting, right? So there's gonna be five different categories I want you to work from in 2023, okay? The first category, voicings. And you can pull the book open if you have it right now. The first category is gonna be voicings, okay? Number one, let me switch my screen here real quick just because I'm not gonna play it just yet. Um, voicings is going to be number one. Okay. This is in no particular order. Solo piano is in number two category. Improv is number three. Rhythm and coordination for these categories is number four. So any sort of rhythm, right? That rhythmic feel of these things, just like the feeling of jazz. Cause you know, it is swing. And the fifth category is repertoire, repertoire like stylistic stuff, integration of these tools into repertoire, into tunes. So ballads, slow swing, medium swing, fast, miscellaneous things. Five categories, I'll say them one more time. These are very, very important, y'all. Voicings, I'm not from Texas. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> uh, voicings, solo piano, improv, rhythm, and repertoire. These are essentially anything in jazz you could possibly want to learn ever, ever will fall into one of these categories, these five categories, right? So let's say you're a beginner. There's a lot of different things you need to know as a beginner. Let's say you just want to be able to play a tune in a jazz format, okay? Where do you start? Where do you start with that? Okay, and I'm going to advance through the levels, John, so that I can, you know, um, educate everyone here, right? I'm going to give you guys different types of progressions. So out of those, those categories, if you're a complete beginner to jazz, you're going to need to know a lot of different things from those categories. But let's say your goal is just to play one tune. You just want to play a tune. So let's say um, Autumn Leaves, right? What are the components that you're going to need? Well, you need voicing. So that's going to fall within the voicings category that I just talked about. So I'm going to need to know how to play my root position voicings. And let's say um, I'm playing solo piano, right? Well, you're going to need to probably know some solo piano stuff. That was voicing category number two. Excuse me. That was category number two, not voicing category number two. Remember, that was another category I talked about, solo piano. So voicings, let's just stick with voicings for now. I need to know my voicings in Autumn Leaves. And I'm just playing the most beginner voicing, just a root position voicing, right? I'm also gonna be able, I'm also gonna need to play the melody. Right? So at a very, very basic level, if my goal is to play autumn leaves, right? That's my want. My need for Q1 would be a couple different things. Okay, and there's an execution section, right, in the guidebook where you can write down the execution, like what you're going to 
execute. What are the practice exercises you're going to use, okay, to get yourself there? But the need, your want is autumn leaves. Your need is I need my root position voicings. I need to learn those. And you don't have to learn them in all keys. Obviously, you just want to learn the ones in autumn leaves. But if you want to be able to translate this particular tool to other tunes, I always recommend learning them in as many keys as possible because it'll take away a lot of the work up front that you know you would have to work on in tunes. But your need would be this stuff here, right? These basic root position voicings. You would also need to learn the melody. And then you would need some sort of coordination between the two, right? So that might be the third component. So So that would essentially be your path to do that. Now that's a very, that's the most basic thing you could probably do in jazz piano, right? Put melody with root position chords. So now let's up this a little bit. Let's, let's, let's say you want to make this sound a little bit better. How do we do that? I don't want to go into improv just yet. Let's say you want your solo piano to sound a little bit more advanced. Well, you're going to start to follow the different steps in the different categories to improve upon the skill sets and the categories I've talked about. So for example, your voicing category. Triads is right before seventh chords. So I would say you can skip over triads if you want, if you wanna play a lot of pop stuff, but they are the foundation to playing seventh chords, right? So if you have a tr minor triad, adding on your seventh chord, those are, this is very basic stuff. Now voice leading, would be one of the ways you can start to improve upon your solo piano sound in your left hand. And this is a very microscopic step, right? That you can start to use. Now granted, this still doesn't sound that good, trust me, okay? I know it doesn't sound good. But these are small baby steps you can start to take to make your playing sound better. So we're working within the voicing category, right? So now I can start to go down the list, the numbers here in the voicing book, I mean, excuse me, in the voicing category. So the next thing is rootless voicings. Well, I could use rootless voicings now, but here's what starts to happen. We need to go into our solo piano um, category because the first step is melody with root position chords. That's what I just demonstrated for you guys, right? So I'm doing melody with root position chords, right? Step number two is melody with shells underneath. So we do have some options here. If we want to start to increase our playing, right? Maybe in quarter two, okay? I worked on step number one for quarter one. Here's quarter two. Now we start to sound a little bit better. And for all you advanced players out there, Ron, you know, Alex, a lot of the students I know who are on here, I wanna to get to some more advanced stuff, so don't worry. So this is essentially, I'm not teaching you, I don't want to teach you how to play jazz piano right now. I'm teaching you how to use the guidebook to help yourself and develop a plan for yourself to reach your goals, right? With different types of education and the steps necessary to make these skill sets um, better, better, right? Because you need to be honest about what you can and can't do. So the next step in solo piano is shells underneath the melody, shells and bass notes. Right? When there is no melody. Right? So on and so forth. So here's my shells. Okay? Then the next step, if I wanted to go from there to the third step in the solo piano category, would be to split shells. So instead of having this, I would have this. And then instead of doing this, I could do this. So I'm splitting my shells now, right? I could do this. So we're starting to get a little bit more advanced. So solo piano is, hey John, yes, this is all in the workbook. The steps I'm referring to is all in the workbook. These steps, yep. Um, Cool. Great to, great to know, Alex. Um, yeah, again, the, all these, everything I'm referring to is kind of like in the workbook, uh, the guidebook, right? So jazzpianoschool.com forward slash 2023 planning book, and you can get it if you don't have it. But this is a solo piano goal now. So you, you've set a solo piano goal, 
and solo piano is your thing. Now, eventually, you're gonna need more types of voicing. So let's say you're great at solo piano. Sorry about that. Didn't have my phone set to silent. Let's say you're playing solo piano, and, and I'm gonna take a, an example from a student that was in the accelerator program recently. But let's say you were playing and you didn't know a sus voicing, for example, right? Now your sus voicing can completely change, right? The way your sound in solo piano sounds. Like it's essentially a reharm. It's also a voicing. If this is where you say, okay, do I know my sus voicings? Do I not? Right? And a sus voicing would be in the voicings category. Okay? And so if I wanted to integrate or implement a sus voicing or an altered voicing, right? So I could go. Right? Or a reharm. You would need to ask yourself and be honest with yourself. Okay, in this moment in time, what is my goal? Do I want do I want reharms first of all, or do I need something else? And look at the list. For example, for your voicings list, like is a sus voicing or is some sort of like changing of an extension, like adding extensions? Is this super far down the list? Because if it is, you're jumping over a lot of steps. Right, and let's take improv for a second. Let's say you wanted to improvise over this. Your goal was to improvise over a jazz standard for quarter one. Like what, what uh, tune? Like what, whether you're, work, let's say just friends because we're working on that in the tune of the month for all the members. So if my goal was to improvise, what step am I at? Like am I at chord tones? Am I at connecting chord tones? Here would be chord tones. Am I at bebop approach notes, right? I've gone through those other steps and I'm at bebop approach notes. So then my improv might sound like this. Right? Am I at textures? Am I at tier three using textures, dynamic slides? So now my improv might sound like this. Right? So that would be all textural stuff, but all these different types of steps that I'm teaching you guys, they're all built in a sequential and foundational order. Meaning if you're kind of skipping a lot of these steps and jumping down to like step eight in, in voicings or nine in voicings or step six, you know, in solo piano by add, trying to add these like extensions. A lot of times we go to YouTube and we, we learn transcriptions of solo piano players like this and we'd play Autumn Leaves. Right? Uh. And it's just way too far advanced. We have no foundation. We haven't moved through the steps. So you really want to try and build that foundation and kind of work exactly on what the next step for you would be rather than trying to grasp and claw at all these kind of like fancy shiny pearls out there, you know, in gems that you think are going to make your playing sound great. You can't pile on <laughs> excuse me for the phrase I'm sure some of you have heard. You can't pile on crap on top of crap. Hey, Katie, what's up? Um, thanks for being here. Sacramento native and lifetime member of Jazz Piano School. Um, so you can't pile on crap on top of crap. Excuse my language. Um, I've started this all wrong, hence the fresh, so I need to reset using WordPress. Yeah, great, John. Yeah, exactly. And it's it, this is exactly what this planning session is for. And so, Katie, fantastic musician. You know, um, let's take someone who's more advanced. You know, Katie's a fantastic advanced musician. What would someone like that, um, even Ron, you know, what would you want to be able to accomplish more of in your playing, right? Katie's fantastic singer, um, pianist too, like if she wanted to be able to uh, accompany herself in more of a jazz style or get more types of reharms or voicings going for herself, right? 
that would be her want goal. So in her want goal for Q1, she would write more intricate um, voicings with extensions, right? Now in the voicings list, extensions or changing of extensions is pretty high down there, right? So that would be kind of like nine or going to seven. So creating some lush two hand voicings, maybe some reharms. Even if you're playing pop stuff, I still use a lot of extensions in my pop stuff for my band solo bell and things like that. I use a sus chord all the time. I'll go to flat nine and sharps 11s. You know, these big spreads, but that would be her want goal. And then her need would be, okay, how do I get myself there? How do I acclimate myself to all these different types of extensions? I need to start isolating each extension and learning about it, right? And going through a process. And if you don't know a two hand voicing spread, meaning if I don't have kind of one, three, five, seven, and three, or just even one, seven, three down, I'm not gonna be able to get that two hand spread that I want, right? So that would be part of the execution. So your practice exercise here would be one, seven, three, right? And I would move this through the, the keys if I could, you know, if you guys are down to do that, or you can just start to kind of learn this in a couple keys maybe, and then start to add on to that. But here would be my C minor two hand voicing spread. One, seven, three, one, seven, three, one, seven, three, one, seven, three. This is for all my minor seven chords. Okay, and then I would do my dominant chords. One, seven, three, one, seven, three, one, seven, three. Now this particular skill set also kind of carries over into solo piano. So like Ron, if you were really looking to get more into um, voicing solo piano melodies with bigger spreads, more lush spreads, like something like um, All the Things You Are, right? You could check out your two hand voicing spreads, really focus in on the foundation, which again is one, seven, three, one, 10, seven, or one, three, seven for a thinner type of voicing. So like Ron, you would really need to work on that type of education there. And then when you go to a tune to spread out your voicing or harmonize every note within the tune, you have your foundation down one, 10, three, or rolling it or one, seven, 10. And then the next step would be to fill in with extensions. Right here. So the basis or the foundation to everything I just played isn't necessarily just trying over and over and over to do that on the tune, all the things you are, because you don't really have, you don't know the knowledge. You need to isolate the issue, practice that, right? So my, again, my want would be to play all the things you are and harmonize every melody note um, on the downbeat of the chord with full lush two hand voicings to sound more let's say like a uh, moder like a Bill Evans ish or maybe like a Keith Jarrett ish. Right. That would be my want, but my need, my need, the steps that I would need to execute this would be to practice my foundation two hand voicing spreads in all the keys because through all the things you are, it's changing keys a lot. I would need to practice one, seven, three, one, seven, three, one, seven, three. I'd also need to practice one, 10 and seven, either jumping what 10, excuse me, one to 10 and three, sorry. Right. So here's C minor. So root three, seven, root three, seven, root three, seven. Right. Or if you can reach tenths, you would do that. And then your thirds as well. One, three, seven, one, three, seven. These are the foundational components that will get you there to teach you that. Right. And then I would do that for my dominance as well. One, seven, three, one, seven, three. Now this is the stuff that stinks that we, we don't, you know, really want to do, but it's the stuff we need to be honest with ourselves. Like what do we need to practice? right? To get better at a certain thing. And once you can kind of 
discern what it is. Like, am I missing voicings? Am I if, in my in my improv right? If you go to your your improv list here, and you kind of find out what step you're at. And again, guys, this is obviously a generalized list. There's like uh, things. It can get very granular. It can get much more granular than what I've put on the list. You know, in jazz piano, there's thousands of categories. But this is a good place to get you started. Obviously, if you are a member of jazz piano school, you can ask me questions, and we can work through more of the the categories and things like that. But just as a person outside, you know, this is open to the public right now. If you're learning from this, this is a great list to get you started for 2023. If you want to improvise more, like look at where you are. Like, do I know? Again, back to the question and honesty. Do I know, can I play a full solo by connecting chord tones with chord scales? And that would sound like this over Autumn Leaves. Believe it or not, there was not uh, everything I was doing with chord scales and chord tones, just chord scales and chord tones. And here would just be chord tones. Right? Just chord tones. I think I actually did make a mistake or two in there, which was not a chord tone. <laughs> but can I do that? Again, you need to be so honest with yourself to say like, am I comfortable with this yet? No. Okay, well, it doesn't make sense to keep layering on stuff on top of stuff if I don't have this foundational principle down. It is fun to do that. And I do recommend that as like a fun way to kind of keep your your mind sane, right? Oh, it's all, it's all, it's all good, John. Um, don't, this is all for uh, people to ask as many questions as you want. Ask as many questions as you want. I'm happy to answer as many questions as you want. But to keep your mind sane, everyone, obviously you got to work on fun stuff. Okay, I think a lot of people come to me and they're like, oh man, there's so many exercises inside of Jazz Piano School, inside the main course curriculum. Like, am I expected to know all this? Well, technically, I mean, it depends on how good you want to get, right? Because if you get to a tune and you see a, a B minor 7 flat 5 chord and you haven't practiced your Locrian scale over that or an, an E flat minor 7 um, flat 5 chord, right? If you haven't worked in on that particular chord in that key, then unfortunately, like, as you're playing the tune, you're going to have to skip over the chord, right? So I think a lot of us, as we as we see the exercises, we're like, I don't want to do this. Do I really need this? When you get to the tune and you experience that little like, oh, I don't know this. I should have done that. That's what, that should really light the fire within you, you know? So, okay, I need to um, bring it full circle now and move back to these categories, okay? Because the series that I'm going to do here, this is just kind of the intro. What I'm giving you guys right now is like an intro to the planning guide. And the series that I'm going to do is all about assessing where you at or where you're at in these different categories, right? So your solo piano category, your might be, let's say you're at, so you're playing, your goal is to play solo piano. So I'm going to have a live stream on just solo piano. Um, playing melodies and comping and comping, right? So if I would want to, to accompany someone in a solo piano style, right? I would need to be able to do something like this, right? Sorry, I didn't have the camera on, but it didn't matter. Um, but I would need to be able to try to do something like that if I was wanted to accompany someone in a solo piano style. If I also just wanted to play solo piano, there's a couple things I would learn. So I'm going to break down the whole solo piano, help you guys figure out where you're at with solo piano. And then there's the voicings category. A lot of people's improv or their accompaniment techniques don't sound great because of their voicings. So let's say you needed better voicings, right? You may just be playing inversions all the time, right, of chords. Let's say you're comping for someone and you're just playing all inversions. That would be a category you'd want to work on. 
in 2023. So maybe your want is to just increase your voicing repertoire to be able to integrate them in your playing so you can get more types of voicings like this happening, right? Or like this. Woo. Or this. Or this, right? Or this. I love this. This is a minor seven flat five voicing that I use. Nine, three, 11, flat five, seven. This is for an A minor seven flat five chord. Right, how gorgeous is that? So you have this four note cluster here, which is so cool. And you have the seven on top. And then I would move to my D seven altered. And then to my minor major. I love using the 11 in here too. So let's say you wanted some thicker, lush, more advanced voicing with more colors, more extensions. That would be on your want goal for Q1 that you'd write in your workbook. And then your need goal would be to add, well, first of all, depending upon how well you know your minor seven flat five chords, right? You'd really need to kind of break it down. So start with your shells and your flat five chord. And let's say you want to learn this voicing. Obviously, you'd need to kind of practice that a little bit more. Work it through the keys or whatever keys you need to. You would need your altered voicing. That's a good one. And then again, any of the voicings that I showed you. So depending upon like what you're trying to play, what tunes you're trying to work through, um, what types of voicings that you want, I'll go way more into the whole sequential process of that when I do my voicing lesson. But that's what you'd wipe, write, <laughs> that's what you'd wipe down, you crazy wabbit. So each one of these is going to be an assessment for you. So what's your next step right now? Right? How do we how do you take the information that I'm giving you um, and start to to really nail down a plan for 2023? And hopefully the more you come to the series I'm doing, the more in depth your goal is going to be, or excuse me, your plan is going to be. And I would say, you know, again, if you if you're your goal is to um, play in a band or comp for someone or accompany someone. If that's kind of like more or less your goal, then you're going to need a lot more voicing of the voicing category in the guidebook, right? You're really going to need to focus on more voicing stuff to get your voicings happening. And if you're in a band, then you have a bass player. So that's going to determine the specific type of voicing that you need. So don't go after like um, heavy, just single hand voicings. You, you want some two hand voicings that you can use. If you're not in a band and you're playing and you want to accompany someone, then you'll, you'll definitely need more bass notes in there, right? To get some low end bass notes. Um, and you'll be working through all the voicing category. Let's say you want more improv work, right? Like I was saying before, let's say you want to add improv into whatever you're doing. Then again, where are you at? So for quarter one, I want to be able to improvise over a blues, right? Okay. Well, then you need some blues work. Do you know your blues scale, right? Do you know your major six blues scale? Okay. Do you know your full major blues scale? Right? Okay. Cool, Richard. Good to, good to know. Um, these will be available for replay for you guys to keep working through again um, and kind of thinking about how to how to get through things. Um, now, um, let me see. Uh, working through the main, we'll, we'll go, is working through the main curriculum, we'll go through all these steps. Great question. Great. Wow. Why can't I talk? Great question, Rosanna. So essentially the main curriculum is like everything you could possibly want to know on jazz piano, right? So my answer to you is yes, it does go through all of this stuff, but it can take a long time. So what this planning guide will do for you in these series of lessons is expedite that result for you because you're nailing down a specific target that you want. For example, improv, right, Rosanna? Or like Rosanna, give me an example of what, what your goal is. Right, I can help you fast track. Or if anyone else wants to kind of throw some examples out there, I think this would be a great exercise right now for me to give you guys some demonstrations 
um, of what you guys are looking to accomplish. Like, what is your goal, right? What would you like to do? So throw, throw, some, um, throw some in the chat for me. I'd love to kind of help demonstrate this uh, process of, for what it would be like for all of you to do this, okay? So technically, yes, the main course curriculum will do that. But again, this will expedite your result because if you just want to learn how to improvise over the blues, like you don't need to know um, your two-hand voicings that much. And you don't need to really know how to, um, you know, do a lot of different things that are in the main course curriculum. You really just want to learn your blues improvisation. And so that would be what you'd expedite to. Now, does it mean you're also missing a lot of components? Yes. But does it mean you're able to play your goal and get to your goal more faster and quicker, right? Yes, it does. So as long as you know that and understand that, um, so Alex, that's a, let me see, your voice leading would be your need, right? So what's your why? Like, why do you want to learn how to voice lead? Um, that's what you need to ask yourself. So what's your, what's your want? And then your need would be like, okay, I want to sound better at so-and-so. And so your need would be to work on voice leading. Um, cool. Sound more professional playing solo piano. Awesome for Ron, right? Um, yeah. So let's take, let's take solo piano, for example. So solo piano, if we're working a lot of, a lot of students want to play solo piano because you're not playing in a band. I get it. Now for just working on solo piano, it removes the whole improv section, right? So for autumn leaves, if I just want to be able to play autumn leaves, like the melody and chords in a nice arrangement, let's say. I don't need any improvisation work, which to answer Rosanna's question, is, is a, there's a lot of improv um, work in the um, main course curriculum that you would not need to go through, right? Um, and this is answering John's question as well. So you can get rid of all that. That's what I'm talking about, Rosanna, is like the main course curriculum contains so much information. If you just want to be able to play solo piano, then I'd recommend moving through the solo piano specialty course. But the main course curriculum success path covers essentially like everything in jazz piano that you could possibly want to learn, right? Um, cool. We got a lot of, a lot of people here. Um, let me see. So let me stick with this and then I'll get to some, some, some of these other examples. So just to play solo piano better, in a more, in Alex, for you too, voice leading fashion, the steps on here are very accurate, right? So the solo piano steps you have on here are very accurate. Ron, you're, you're a very advanced player, so you're, you're probably at step six here, you know, but I would ensure for you, Ron, just because I know you're playing um, from going through the accelerator program, uh, you want to ensure that you can do all the previous steps as well easily, Ron, too. That will help you, that will help your framework. So I might take some time to go back. Make sure you can play the melody with the shells underneath or your shells split right between both hands. Like this. Okay, but you'd be more of an advanced player. But for Alex, this is a great, you know, you were working on this too with um, uh, Have You Met Miss Jones and different things like that. So these steps are very accurate representation of the sequential path that you'll want to take for solo piano. So Rosanna, I would follow these steps here. Melody with root position chords. Melody with shells underneath. Again, this is all in the guidebook. Shells underneath the melody. So here's my melody. Here are my shells. Here's my bass note. And then I'm going to go to shells. Right? The next step after that, step number three, is to split my shells. So instead of playing this, I'm doubling this seven here. I'm going to remove the seven. I have one, seven, three here, and my melody is actually also a shell, but that's okay. So I'm going to do this. Now, the reason I do that is to free up these fingers to add different types of extensions and colors later on, right? So I'm, I'm creating a very important foundational exercise in my solo piano, which is going to allow me to add create two hand voicings in the future. But if I don't do this step, step number three in the guidebook, I'm not going to be able to do this, right? This to this, this, right? To this, this, to this, to this. This is step number three where I'm splitting shells now, right? With my melody on top. I wasn't playing the melody there for the last couple of bars, but I'm just showing you the basis, the foundation. 
So Rosanna, this particular instance would expedite you or accelerate you. This is what the whole purpose of the accelerator program was, was to kind of learn this information that you wanted to go directly to that. Now, Rosanna, would this mean you can improvise at in a fast tempo style over autumn leaves? No, right? And would it mean you can comp through autumn leaves in a medium swing style? No, but <coughs> it is expediting you to your goal which is the whole purpose of these planning sessions for 2023, where you would write your goal down, your want in the guidebook, and then your need is going to be exactly what I'm showing you. You need to be able to break down different types of tunes with shells split between your hands, step number three, or discern what step that you need in the list that I've put in the guidebook and practice that, okay? Um, let me see here, hopefully that helps. Ron, for you, because again, like I said, you're so advanced, uh, what we left off with, um, your two hand arrangements of getting more voicings under your hand and having your pinky more on the top of the melody to allow your fingers to have more options to play more notes is going to be big for you, right? So a lot of times, like let's say I were, I were to go one, two, three here, right? Where my pinky is placed, this is specifically to Ron, just because I know he's playing, he was in the accelerator program. If my pink th third finger is here, uh, yeah, exactly, Rosanna. Um, and, you know, uh, Ron, I'll get back to that in just a second. It, it, could, it can take a lifetime for sure. Um, but, you know, if you, I've seen so much progress happen with just 20 minutes a day. If you just practice 20 minutes a day, Consistency is king, always, always. Consistency and focus on a particular tool is king. So like, if you want your altered voicings, if you practice your altered voicing in all keys, 15 minutes a day, in 10 days or so, you'd know them about like the back of your hand. Then you'd move on to your next tool. Sus chords. Practice those for 15 minutes a day. 10 days later, you'd know them back, like the back of your hand. Okay. And again, you reach a threshold where like you don't need to practice them anymore because you know them so well. Okay. I don't need to practice my sus chords anymore. Right. But a lot of us, we just tinker with things, meaning like we'll try it in a couple keys. We never really get to the point where we actually know something right? Ask yourself that question. Like how many of you actually know a tool that I've talked about today? Like your sus chords, like the major six blues scale in different types of keys. Like how many do you actually know it? And this is what I did a lot of my life. I would kind of play it in a couple keys and like experiment with it and then move on to something else, right? We need to spend more time with things. Anyway, Ron, um, back to you. If I were to play um, my foolish heart, or excuse me, my romance, and go one, two, three, it's going to put my hand in a certain position. Now, we always want the melody on top. This is a solo piano trick for all you guys out there too, which is a more advanced trick because Ron's an advanced player. I want to keep my pinky on top as much as possible. So usually in my romance, I will go... I'll keep my pinky on top. That way I can get a low end bass note and fill with harmonies. And then I'll do something like this. Right now, check it out. If I had my second finger on here, or if I went to imagine if I went two, three, one, like if my thumb was on this melody note, all four of these fingers are doing absolutely nothing for my solo piano playing. We always want to give our fingers opportunities to help support the melody. So that's why you always want your melody on top with your pinky as much as possible, Ron, to fill in down here. That's what I'd work on for you, honestly, and extension recognition. Um, so really being able to say, okay, on this one chord, I want to be able to place the 7 and 13 together with the 9. So my voicing would be this. Like that would be um, that. Okay? Okay. Cool. So 
And then I'd go here if I, I want to place the 11 and 9 in my voicing. Right? So, Ron, really working on extension recognition and placing the specific type of sound that you want in your solo piano playing will take you to that more advanced level. And again, this pinky trick, even though it sounds kind of funny and I call it a trick, this is so important for you specifically and anyone out there looking to play really advanced solo piano. Um, <clears throat> Jesse asked me to, in Portuguese to say you are brilliant. Okay, awesome. <laughs> sounds good. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate that. Um, so this little pinky trick is so important for all of you. And again, this is a very advanced trick. <laughs> right? To be able to fill in your solo piano. Otherwise, if I do this, then it sounds very thin, right? So to get that more advanced technique, you're going to need more of that stuff, Ron. Um, where, where was that? Let me take some of these other goals here. Wim says, my goal is to learn the instrument piano after that autumn leaves stage zero. Okay, cool. So, so Wim's at a really early stage and that's okay. That's great. So how do we expedite his progress? to make him move more faster. Cause just like a lot of you, he's in stage zero of the main course curriculum inside of jazz piano school. And so Wim, again, you don't necessarily need everything in the curriculum. Um, that's gonna be for people that literally want, like are deep into jazz piano. Like they wanna really go deep into everything, you know? But let's say you wanna jump around. If you just wanna play solo piano, Wim, then again, um, work through just the solo piano stuff I have in the workbook, the solo piano specialty course that's inside of jazz piano school. Um, the improv mastery course is going to be coming out. So if you guys just want improv stuff, obviously January 23rd, you can work more on that and expedite your results. But again, your voicings, Wim, you'll, you're going to need um, your, your basic voicings here in, in all your minor sevens, your dominant sevens, your major sevens. You'll need to learn those. You'll need to work on those um, and things like that. So obviously with the, with the melody. Um, and you'll want to be able to play those in all keys. That way, when you get to any tune, you can play the melody with the chords as well. Uh, let me see. Alex had a question. Oh, it, see, oh, it seems magical. How do you recommend we find what we need in JPS curriculum learning split shells via the exercises? Great question. I think so. I was kind of touching base on this. Um, so a lot of the specialty courses um, go deeper into the categories that I'm explaining um, right now, for example. So your solo piano, the solo piano system goes deep into everything I'm talking about solo piano. So if solo piano is your thing, then I'd highly recommend visiting the solo piano system specialty course. Okay. And that's going to be in the specialty course area of the members area, right? Now the main course curriculum success path is great because it leads you down a path which gives you all the tools to do essentially everything. So for example, if you go into the solo piano system specialty course, it's not going to teach you all the voicings that you need, right? Because that's not what solo piano is about. Like you, you do need to know voicings to play solo piano, meaning you would need to know your basic minor sevens. And I, if I do recall, I kind of go over those a little bit, but more advanced voicings like rootless voicings and extensions and things like that. Um, that's going to be more so found in the main course curriculum, Alex, for example. So the solo piano specialty course is all about solo piano, like the components it needs, filling time, how to play fills, how to create these two hand types of voicings with the melody on top. Um, but it's not all about voicings, right? And there actually will be a voicing specialty course coming out. So you guys can go through all these different ca categories and things like that. Um, but Again, ask yourself what, what your goal is. Like if you're trying to comp through something or improvise through something, obviously you can work more on improvisation with the improvisation mastery course that's coming out. Go to the specific um, course that's focused in on these components and work through that. And then, like I said originally, self-assess. Like when I'm playing solo piano, do my voicing sound basic is a question that you might want to ask yourself. So for Alex, like if you find yourself using basic voicings, that might be a key indicator for you to be like, okay, I need to work more on my voicings. I need to go back to the main course curriculum and work on my rootless voicings or work on two hand voicings, or I need to go to the voicing specialty course when it comes out and, and work on all just voicings. Right? Or if you're playing a lot of voicings and you're able to just kind of like comp through chords like this, 
Let's say I, I'm able to do this. But I, that, that's just comping and bass line. Those are two components that are happening there. Comping. Well, I should say three. Comp, rhythmic comping. Rhythm is one of them. Voicings. And bass notes. Bass lines. But there's, no so, there's not many solo piano methods and strategies that I just demonstrated. Right? So if you can do this, what I just played... And you want to be able to play solo piano, you might be like, oh, okay, man, I have a lot of voicings down and I got my walking bass note down, bass line down, but I don't really know how to do this. Uh. know how to do that because that's a completely separate skill set than doing this so it's really hard to just learn everything all at once and I'd go as far as to say it's quite impossible <laughs> we really need to isolate certain goals that we have um, I wouldn't say it's impossible. I would say, like Rosanna said, uh, it can take a very long time. And the main course curriculum, you have to remember, it's being used in schools and colleges as a curriculum-based format for classes, right? So, so classes can start in stage one or stage two, depending upon the exercises that are needed for the students and things like that. So if you do want to expedite your process to a certain area of your playing, the main course curriculum isn't the best for that, but it does give you a lot of components in a sequential order. But it'll be up to you. Obviously, you're not studying with me because I can self-assess a student in an instant. And I can tell you, okay, your voicings are at about a two. Your solo piano, your sk solo piano skill set is at a t like an eight, right? Your reharms are about a five. Your rhythms at about a four. You know, your fills are about a three. I can self-assess. I can assess a student in like seconds. But since you're not, you're not working with me, you're not studying with me unless you're in the accelerator program, right? Uh, you need to ask yourself these questions, right? You need to go through the workbook and say, okay, like what level am I at? Like what tier am I at in my improv? Am I on tier one? Am I on tier two? Um, what level of solo piano am I at? Like go into your, the repertoire is actually not um, sequentially ordered, but like what style can you play? What style do you usually play in your repertoire? Do you usually play slow swing tunes? Do you play ballads? Do you know how to play ballads? Do you know how to play fast swing tunes? Miscellaneous for bosses, funk, all their styles. Do you want to be able to add those to your repertoire? Right? And if so, you can kind of expedite to that area and just go directly to learning about fast swing. How do I play fast swing? And if that's the case, a great question like you guys asked before, solo piano fast swing style would be um, the area you want to go to because I show you the exact methods and strategies you're going to need to play fast swing styles in a solo piano style format, right? But in the main course curriculum, you're not going to get there until like stage four, right? Or for your modern improv, when you look want to learn about hexatonics and, and pentatonics, right? When you want to learn about that stuff, like modern improv, that's in like stage four or even five of the main course curriculum, right? So if you want to go right to that point, that's what the improvisation mastery course is going to be for. Granted, I give you all the steps beforehand too. So I give you all the, the bebop and the chord tones and connecting chord tones, but that will be in there as well. And you can jump right to, you know, lesson, I think it's like 12 or 13 in the improvisation um, uh, mastery course, specialty course. 
John, the accelerator program just ended. That was a specialty program that I ran with students um, that signed up for, uh, you know, about three to six months. That actually just ended. I don't know if I'm going to do it again, but the membership, I don't know if you're a member or not. Um, the membership to Jazz Piano School with all the education is available. But if you're looking to study with me personally, that would only be through the accelerator program. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to run one of those again. The closest thing that you all can get um, to studying with me, which, which won't really be studying, but it'll be able, you'll be able to interact with me. will be, be through my new boot camp <clears throat> um, series, which will be on specific topics, which will, will be on Zoom. So you can ask me questions through Zoom and I'll be able to respond to you um, personally. And the, the, the boot camp, the first boot camp is going to be improv boot camp on January 23rd, um, which will be available to sign up if you are interested in signing up for that on Monday um, because that's when the holiday sale will start and then access to all the discounts for, oh, lifetime member. Great, great, John. Perfect. Um, then, then you're all set. So the accelerator program was a separate program, um, run outside of all the self study, um, courses, but that just ended. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be doing it again. So I'll keep you posted if I do do it again though. Um, so let me see. Um, let me go back to some of these comments here. Jesse, I wish, I wish I knew Portuguese, but I do not, unfortunately. So I'll, I'll have to use Google Translate for that probably. Um, so only P Bruce says, solo piano is my thing. I play with two full hand voice English essentially ping on top. Great. That's awesome to hear, Bruce. That's really cool. Need need transition to solo or to solo a chorus or two. I tend to use stride bass note and rootless voicings. Any Need transition to solo a chorus or two. I tend to use stride bass notes and rootless voicings. Any suggestions? Yeah, Bruce, that's it. I mean, it sounds, sounds like you got it. Like, um, Bruce, when the improvisation specialty course comes out, um, check out the solo piano section of the improvisation mastery specialty course, because that'll all, it'll be all on improvising in a solo piano style, like what to do. But just to give you an example of what you're going to be doing, um, uh, you'll just be playing, you know, uh, bass notes and usually jumping to a rootless voicing like you said. Now, stride, what I call stride, is consistent motion. So if I'm soloing Bruce, this would be stride. I don't tend to use that because stride is, honestly, it's technically difficult on your left hand. I use broken stride a lot, okay, which is taught actually in the, special, the solo piano system specialty course where I play a bass note and then a chord, and then I might go to a chord and then a bass note. So if I was soloing over autumn leaves, it might sound like this. <laughs> My piano's sticking. My left hand is doing a lot of different types of components as you might have seen. It's going from bass note to full chord. It's doing shells. It's doing one, three, and seven. Something like this. Sometimes it's doing tenths when I can reach them. One, seven, three. So all those left hand components is what I call broken stride. And anytime I'm playing solo piano or soloing for myself, that's what my left hand's doing. To support my right hand, it's doing a combination of all those different things. So like bass notes to shells like this bass note to full chord and that's what you'd really you'd really want to work on your left hand doing that kind of stuff uh let me see let me see if i can answer any more questions here um let me see any more examples of anything so Cool. Yeah. Just so you guys know. So the boot camps in the accelerator program is are those are like add ons to the lifetime membership because they do require like the in-person time 
of myself. Um, that's kind of like taking time out of my other commitments and things like that. And you do get me personally, um, for the boot camp through this zoom platform, obviously hope, I think you guys all know what zoom is at this point. Um, but this will allow you to interact with me and that's why it's add on for lifetime members though, all the self-study education that's always released, um, in the self-study area of jazz piano school, all the live lessons we do within the jazz piano school area, John will, is always free for lifetime members. Um, these are separate programs I kind of started outside of Jazz Piano School. And so essentially that's why they're add-on because it does require my in-person time. Um, there were investments. I had guests come in um, for the accelerator program that I was paying to come in um, and all that good stuff. And so that's essentially. But all the self-study courses that are always released within the um, Jazz Piano School area, all the live lessons, the tune of the month that we do, that we're doing right now, that's always free for lifetime members. That will always be free. All the courses I'm gonna release in the future, the um, Improvisation Specialty Mastery course will always be free. Um, thanks, Deborah. Um, I didn't see your chat up there, so thanks, I missed it. Thanks for giving me the heads up. I'll go back and look. Um, but the Improv Specialty Mastery course will be free. The Cocktail Jazz Pianist, which I'm gonna be releasing next year, the Oscar Peterson style, the Voicing Specialty courses, all of those specialty courses, all the new practice materials that um, I'm going to be recording in the main course curriculum, Success Path, that will be always be free. All the self-study stuff will always be free, all the live lessons, so on and so forth. Ah, my voice is going a little bit. All right, let me see Deborah's question here. Um, let me see here. Deborah, uh, my goal is to learn how to or how and when to add fills to similar mode. Like it must have been how and when to cool Deborah. That's great. That's a great goal. It must have been love. I, I actually do, I'm not familiar with that tune too well. Um, so I won't be able to demonstrate that. Unfortunately, um, I don't, I don't even know if I've ever played that. It must have been love. I'll have to listen to that. Cool. I love learning new tunes. That's great. Um, but Debbie, Deborah, to, to answer your question, like fill. So I would, I'm assuming this is in a solo piano style, right? So if this is a solo piano style and you're looking to add fills, let me just see, make sure here. Add fills to a simple melody. Yeah. Um, all of that information and education will be in the solo piano system specialty course. Okay. There's a huge section in the solo piano, specialty course, <coughs> on fills for space. Now, it's really funny because in the tune of the month that we're doing this, this month, Just Friends, there's so much space, right? So, Just Friends, right? Goes like this. So, we have Just Friends, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's just holding on whole notes. So for Deborah, for you in a solo piano system, specialty course that's available inside of um, Jazz Piano School, there's a whole section on playing fills. One of the things we can do would be comping for ourselves. So I literally take my right hand and jump it down to the lower end of the piano and comp for myself and then move back up to the melody. And I do little voice leading techniques like this, shells, or you can do runs, improv fills, stuff like that. But to answer your question, Deborah, all of the methods and strategies, the things that I'm talking about right now, I isolate each one as a tool inside of the solo piano system and give a complete lesson on different types of fills and strategies you can use to fill space in solo piano. So I'd highly recommend you go check that out because that'll be super beneficial for you to fill in the space of simple melodies like when you're always looking for the space in melodies to fill otherwise the melody when it's moving it holds the time for you so you don't need to fill that's a really great nugget anytime the melody is moving you don't need to fill obviously because the melody is holding the tempo for you so just by playing the melody you don't need to do anything because the melody is the tempo or it's the time Right, but when you have the melody holding, you need to fill that space in a solo piano style. Right, so I'd fill that space with a comp or a chord or an improv line or utilizing any of the other methods that I talked about uh, and that I describe in the solo piano system. Hopefully that helps, hopefully that helps. All right, let me um, just recap 
okay? Everything I talked to you guys about today, and then I'm going to let you go because I don't want to flood you guys with too much information because there's going to be more to this planning series, right? Um, I think the next one I'll do will be on solo piano. So if your goal is solo piano, moving through the solo piano steps, like what is the path to get to an advanced level? Or if you're a beginner, where do you start? Or if even if you're like a year or two in, how do you kind of keep making progress? That'll be the next planning series for 2023. It'll be all on solo piano. And then I'll move through improv, obviously, as we get close to the release of the Improvisation Mastery Specialty Course, voicings, repertoire, style, so on and so forth. But get the guidebook. Go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash 2023 planning book to download the guidebook if you don't have any. Uh, John, there is some merchandise. It's not up for sale really um, at this point, but like these shirts are for sale. Some I, Maybe <laughs> I should probably work on making that happen, but uh, it just hasn't been an integral part of the, the business, you know, um, but I think it would be fun for people to have that. But yeah, we have coffee mugs and notebooks and pens and stickers and stuff like that hoodies and shirts. It's just not up on the website available for sale. But what you guys want to do, go get the go get the, the um, book. And again, if you're watching this in the future and you're not a member, you're not on the email list, go to jazzpeoplescore.com forward slash 2023 planning book. Download that. All of you, the members included, the non-members included, use the planning book to map out just Q1. Because after Q1, I want you to reassess and this is what I meant to say, and this is a great way to end. After quarter one, meaning at the end of March of 2023, okay, think about have you made progress in the area that you wanted to make progress on? Why or why not? Right? And some of those factors could be, well, I didn't practice, <laughs> so I didn't make progress. Um that's an easy one, right? I love that one because I'm like, cool, that's an easy solution. Just practice, right? Very easy solution. But the harder solutions, which um, I sympathize more for, <laughs> unfortunately, are, okay, I practice a lot, but I didn't make progress. Now that, my friends, that's a problem. Because when you're practicing, you're dedicated to the craft, but you're not making the progress you want, and you still can't accomplish the goal that you want, that's an issue. That means you're not practicing the right stuff. Thanks, Jesse. That's, oh, Jesse, good to see you, man. Thanks so much. That means you're not practicing the right thing or you're not practicing the right way, right? And so you've kind of, unfortunately, wasted the first three months of the year or just any of the time you spent practicing. So it's really, really important that you practice the right way and you work on the right exercises to do what you want to do. And I think that's why this is so important. Like for you, Deborah. Your goal was perfect. You said, I want to be able to fill the space of simple melodies. Great. That's the most specific, perfect goal you could possibly have for, for the first quarter of next year. So write that in your booklet. And then your need is going to be to learn and practice the fill methods and strategies that I have in the solo piano system specialty course. Work on those in different keys. There's a lot of different methods that I teach there. Work on utilizing those methods and integrating them into the tune that you want to learn, right? And assess at the end of quarter one, is this better? And for you, because you have such a specific goal, it should be very, it should be much better, right? Um, you know, and again, take a specific goal, as specific as possible as you can and really kind of decide what you want to work on. And at the end of the quarter one, say, okay, what do I need to do for quarter two? Do I need more voicings? Do I need more? And again, it will be from one of the five categories or you may have some overlap in the categories, right? You may have some overlap. So Ron, you might need more, vo you might need some more voicings and some more solo piano techniques from, so that would be from both of two categories, right? Of the guidebook. And so I'd recommend checking out the solo piano specialty course for you. Um, for voicings, you can go to the main course curriculum success path. There's a whole two-hand voicing series or extensions if you need more extensions, right? Really isolating extensions. But then reassess where you're at at the end of quarter one and 
You can either go further with the goal that you've just set for Q1, just set the goal again for Q2, but maybe try and be more specific with it if it hasn't worked out well, or you can go a completely other direction. You can go into like repertoire now. Maybe you want to learn more about ballads or like more about um, playing in a group or two hand voicings, you know, f to comp for people. It's completely up to you. So you can kind of self-assess and direct your path. Um, so this will be a great way to really jump right to the specific things that you want and get right into the needs of what you need to execute in order to make more progress in the different types of things that you want, right? Like I said, the main course curriculum is flooded with information. So if you do want to just kind of plow through all that, by all means, go for it, right? But again, you can also take this planning series that I'm working on with you right now and jump to specific areas and make progress in that. Um, Alex, to answer your question, if you go to the tune of the month, the, we were working out some bugs, but I think they're fixed now. But if you go to um, the lab area in the lab, you'll see, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see tune of the month. Tune of the month tile. Click on tune of the month and you'll see just friends there and you can click on just friends and then you'll have a playlist of all of the live sessions that I've done so far. I've done two of them. The next one is next Tuesday, the third one. And we're, we're just going to keep archiving all the stuff there. Okay. Um, I don't think it was working on iPhone, but it was working on desktop and tablet. But if you're using any of those, you should be fine. But if you're using an iPhone, I think we just had a bug to fix, but I think we fixed it. So I think we're good. <clears throat> cool. All right, guys. Well, that was a great session. Um, again, the holiday sale will start on Monday. So if any of you guys want to pick up the Improvisation Mastery Specialty Course or join the boot camp, you're absolutely welcome to. Um, if you're a lifetime member already, um, it won't really matter for you. Um, and yeah, if you're a non-member, feel free to peruse the, the sale, the holiday sale and pick up any course that you think might, you might want, right? If you really want to focus on your solo piano, then the solo piano system, especially course would be perfect for you. If you want to focus on your, um, your improvisation, then pre-reserve the improvisation mastery, especially course that's coming January 23rd. If you want um, the blues, the blues specialty course, you will be able to buy the main course curriculum success path actually as well this time around. Um, so if you kind of just want a whole slew of information and you want to work through our success path, which covers everything, you can get that too. So absolutely everything's for sale. It's all a la carte. And again, the mini courses, I've, uh, someone, one of the members that I know said something about the crossover with mini courses actually. Who was that? Gene, I think you, is there a cross-reference between the mini courses and the main course? For example, solo piano course, what would be the prerequisites be in the main course? Um, is there a cross-reference between, I'm not sh quite sure I know what your question is. Um, there's no, there's no prerequisites for, uh, actually, I, I shouldn't really say that. Everything kind of focuses on the main topic. So I would say the prerequisites for like the solo piano system would just be to know at least your root position voicings. You know, you just need some voicings under your hand. That's about it. Um, the mini courses, there's, I don't think there's any prerequisites for the mini courses. They can always be worked through and learned. And if you guys don't know something in any of the courses, um, the information that you would need is always within Jazz Piano School. Like everything you need is within Jazz Piano School, excuse me, somewhere. And I know finding it can be difficult. Goodness gracious. I know finding it can be difficult sometimes, but like if you need, vo this is why the specialty courses will be so helpful. You can always use the search bar at the top, type that in. But the best thing to do is like, if you need solo piano stuff, go to the solo piano spe specialty course. And I'm working on creating more specialty courses this year so that all five of these main categories are going to be there. So you're going to get improv, voicing, solo piano, uh, styles, um, and rhythm. You'll have all the main categories in specialty courses to work from. Um, so you can always go there. And if you do want to learn stuff that I've worked on in the main course curriculum and see how it fits into kind of like the main plan or curriculum, 
that is being used, that's used in curriculums, like how it fits into the main plan of you moving through everything, you can always do that because that will fill a lot of holes for you. You know, you may have holes in your playing and working through the curriculum is a great way to fill those holes. Cool. Got it from the other answers too. Awesome. Um, let me see. I think, yeah, Dunya said, hey, Dunya, I think I saw just friends in the tune analysis. Yeah. So um, it's it's no longer called tune analysis. It'll be tune of the month. So I kind of rebranded that. Um, so if you go to the lab area, you can go tune of, tune of, the, um, tune of the month and you'll find that there. Um, Julie says, when does lesson start? When does lesson start? I'm not sure. Julie, you'll, you'll probably have to rephrase that a little bit. Not sure what you mean by that. Um, this, this particular live stream started um, at 11 Pacific. And Alex, to answer your question, uh, these live streams, will you can access them. Because this is a public live stream, you can access on the YouTube channel if you want. But I also will post these inside the, um, the live archive inside the members area as well. Cool. Thanks, Bruce. Hope you have a good holiday too. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Hello. When are you going to add the first and the second step just for the section of the two of the month? Okay. Yep. Um, so that should be, that should be ready to go. Um, buh facta nov no verba. <laughs> Sorry, I had a hard time saying your name, but yeah, um, the tune of month is ready. So you guys can go get it now. The section's ready. Both videos are all there too. And again, the third video will be the third tune of the month just for members only will be on third on next Tuesday. And I'll be going over voicings and comping through that um, and two hand voicings and stuff like that for comping purposes for solo piano and accompaniment. Okay. So you guys can go get that there. And shoot me a ticket, you know, if there's things not working or you don't see anything, and I'll we'll gladly answer those those questions. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I will um, see you again soon. I'm not sure where the next live stream is going to be for this planning session, but it will definitely be very soon, probably next week sometime. So be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for the sale starting Monday. If you want to pick up some courses, lifetime access will be available. A lot of stuff will be access. Improvisation mastery course will be available. Pick up the guidebook for complete, <laughs> excuse me, completely free. Go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash 2023 planning book. Yes, planning book. Thank you all. Have a great holiday as well. If I don't see you before the holiday, because I'll be doing another live stream next week for y'all on solo piano. Um, otherwise, I will see you then. And you can rewatch this as much as you want on the Jazz Piano School YouTube channel. Okay. See you guys later. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Don't forget to go to jazzpianoschool.com to check out all of our free, amazing education, all of the free podcast blogs. We do have a membership if you're looking to take a next step forward with us, get access to over a thousand different jazz piano videos, playbooks, mini courses, a main course curriculum, success path, and so much more. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at support at jazzpianoschool.com. I hope you have a wonderful day and as always, happy practicing.